um, we were doing, we, we kind of did three sessions. Um, we had the first session that was with the, um, the church in general. Um, and then we had, so we talked about um, the, hang on a second. We took the messages from everything. Um, so we talked about Ephesians um, 5, I believe that's when we did that. I did a, I did a five verse on Ephesians 5. Um, Sean had also talked about an introduction to about the church as well, um, using uh, 1 Corinthians 12. And um, and then later on, we when we had a session with the students of the Bible school, there was other people too that were not students of the Bible school, but um, others as well. And so I kind of did an introduction to the doctrines of grace, um, kind of thinking about how, you know, that this is, the Reformation, how it was not to, to come to start a, a new Christianity, but to give back to the, the original Christianity, give back to the Word of God, and uh, that includes the Doctrines of Grace. So the Protestant um, the movement was always based on the Doctrines of Grace as well, um, and so it's like as if it's, this is nothing new. It's so, it was. It's not also about Job. Um, a verse in there where you know Job, God is responding to Job and he's saying about you know where were you when I did these things and kind of like lifting up the sovereignty of God and um, and then we we kind of tag team so Sean took on total depravity and then um, when he finished up I was I stayed on the stage and I I brought it, I started with the unconditional election um, and then moving into particular atonement or limited atonement. And um, and then Sean talked about uh, irresistible grace, and I closed with um, perseverance of the saints. And um, so throughout the whole thing, it was not it, it didn't feel like how you would be in the United States, where you were trying to defend um, a doctrine. Um, it was that it was like, yeah, we we never heard this before, but yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, duh, this is this is God. Yeah, and so it was like uh, you would you would you would talk about you know, total depravity, and people would be, like, in agreement, clapping, and, um, you know, it was, it was very unique, and uh, and then talking about election, it was just like, you just want to, so, I think Sean could attest to this, it was like an energy in the, in the air that, it was like this, they were just soaking it up, and in complete agreement with what we were saying, and, um, and that they realized that it was not something, this was something to be celebrated. This is something beautiful. Um, kind of like when Sean finished the total depravity, it was like, all right, that's the back to it. <laughs> and, uh, and then that kind of led into, so now we know our state is dead people, as spiritually dead. How does a dead person come to life? How does a dead person choose God? And, and, and then kind of led into that uh, election before the hands of time. And, and you just saw like, people just just an amazement of, of who God was and is and uh, and so it was really cool I one of the things that really was touching was um, on perseverance of the Saints I, um, I I had a little personal story that I I kind of led into and um, of like when I was a kid uh, I don't know it's like maybe 12 or 13 and uh, but before that like, it was almost like, like uh, the way the way an Armenian is taught and is is that your your kind of work it's a work based thought thought process it really is so you're always working for your salvation I'm, I'm, uh, if I if even my repentance is it really turns into a work as well because if I but then at the same time the back of your mind is like if this is the if, if maybe this is the last time God's gonna forgive me. You know, I, I just crossed the line. Like, I, you know, I remember even praying, like, you know, please don't give up hope on me or something like that. You know, like, this, it was just constant torture, not not joy. And um, and I remember, like, my parents, you know, going on a business meeting and they took to, they got home later than, they, than expected. I don't know if this was, like, my first time being by myself or something. I can't remember, but... Uh, I remember that I started calling people that I thought were like good Christians because I thought like Jesus came and, and they, my parents were like, and I was left behind. I mean, it was that tortured like by that. And um, 
And so it's like uh, when I, I shared that story, um, and then I led into preservation of saints. Uh, at the end, uh, Frederick said, um, "You know, the story you shared was exactly what most people feel like in Africa." And and he said, "When they when you said that, like people were spot were telling me afterwards, like that was me, that was me, you know, and, and like they completely understood about preservation of saints and um, and like." It's like a peace came over people, and, and uh, he was getting text messages and things like that, and messages from people. He was showing me them, and um, how like he, they've never heard this kind of teaching before, and that that this is this has changed everything. And so um, it was pretty neat to see. Um, and that was that was uh, the doctrines of grace. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was uh, that was. One of my favorite days of, of teaching, just because afterwards, like we had, uh, there was a young young guy, uh, Jarrell, who was an orphan, and he 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 walks right up to me and says, "But you and Jonathan, God, it was so good." Like after like two and a half hours of teaching, and in the day before, he was telling me the same thing, like, "Oh, I've never really got the gospel and the attributes of God and all this stuff." They're like just. You know, Happy. He was. He was. He was a joyous young man, and, and I learned his story that he was. Uh, um, that he was. You know, he was one of the orphans, and both his parents died of AIDS. <laughs> you know, and but he had so much joy hearing the word of God, and yeah, you know, that that I was like, wow, this this guy is this young man is is happy to hear the word of God, and is happy that he. He heard what he heard, and, um, and, and you know, I felt kind of happy being the bad guy with total depravity because it just made you know, the rest of the doctrines are great. And I, I kept telling them all throughout it, like, this doctrine is true, but it makes the rest of the doctrine so, so sweet, you know, and, and they, they were really cool about that. It was enjoyable. Um, yes, another thing we taught on, like Pastor uh, Winslow, that he is really great, um, a great pastor, and Pastor Frederick is, is awesome. These guys, you know, if they were here in Newcastle, you know, I would, I would want them to be elders in our church. That's how much I love these guys and respect them and can see that they are striving after the Word of God and how, how hardworking they are to, to make sure Jonathan and I were, were teaching the Word of God to the people and orchestrating all that and how unified they were, were with us thousands of miles away. <laughs> that was something that was beautiful. <laughs> but we went to Pastor Winslow's church and we were hearing about some of the, the problems that they had there with false teachings and they have a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses or a lot of a lot of Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Pastor Winslow, his story was that his his father wanted him to be a priest and so that he can live well and wealthy and things like that because you know the Pope is basically king there. <laughs> and well, I'm sorry, Sean. They, the, the priests are actually looked upon in Africa as gods, like literally gods. Yeah. So to be a priest would be that you would be adopted, you would be wealthy, and, uh, and the Catholic Church there is very much like how, I mean, the Catholic Church is still that of this way, but you know, they're more secretive in their, their ways of indulgences and things like that. There are more. Oh, it was very blatant in the in the past before the Reformation. And that's how it is right now in Kenya. It, they won't allow people to have Bibles, um, so they cannot confirm what the priest is preaching. Um, so Bibles are eliminated. Uh, indulgences, and all these kind of things are taking place, and it's just the Catholic Church. And the the president is Catholic, and so it's they're having a, a, a it's a new wave. Catholicism happening there amongst, amongst tons of other false uh, teachers that call themselves prophets and raise up places called Jerusalem and that you have to, you know, do all kinds of craziness to, to get saved. Yeah, and, 
Yeah, no, that's that's a good thing to really highlight is because Pastor Winslow was set to be what his father wanted him to be a priest. So his father basically wanted him to be in that position with been high honor, power, everything like that. But Pastor Winslow said no and rejected Catholicism and <coughs> came to the knowledge of Christ and his father like dismissed him. Said and left him out of the house. And if I remember correctly, you know, he, you know, he would usually get in, and they would, his his sons and daughters would get in, and the, his, Pastor Winslow's father would have given him an inheritance of land, but that that wasn't, yeah, he said that he's withholding that, and not only that, he, he beat um, Pastor Winslow, and he actually had a scar from that <laughs> that he showed us, and so yeah, he's a guy who made sacrifices for the sake of the gospel, and not only that, he has such a hunger and desire to learn. He he self taught himself English, and the one thing that he desired the most was to be able to take a master's program <laughs> to learn more of the Word of God. You know, he he loves soaking up the systematic theology, and and I'll, I'll interject something because of that part right there. So, it's, mm -hmm. um, when, when coming back and thinking about, I mean, I had been thinking about this for a while, and um, you know, but later on we'll have talk with Craig and and so on um, with uh, about the homies and stuff. But um, it, I was it God opened doors up immediately as I came back. Um, a, a, a someone, a theologian that connected with Legionnaire, um, they're going to give us uh, curriculums that are in several languages, not Swahili, but I'm going to be working on getting them translated. Um, and they come with videos and all that kind of stuff. So we're actually going to have a full movement theological seminary free uh, master's program. Uh, the website's already getting built right now. And um, and the, the materials are on their way to me, and they'll be up. So it's actually the same kind of website that I use for my seminary that I pay for, um, and they they'll be able to join it um, and have lectures, have tests, um, and it goes through the whole so everything that you would be taught in a. a, a accredited seminary but for free wow. so um we'll be, we have it we'll have it in english spanish arabic and chinese and then i'll be translating it into swahili as well so uh pastor winslow will be able to 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 work use utilize that as well as the, the, the bible school there mm. yeah and that's kind of a big announcement yeah that's huge. <laughs> yes it's a huge announcement but not only that like they use our videos from our church you know, that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Remember the hope movement and that you all, Craig's teaching, are is making an impact on the rest of the world uh, somewhere else. That, that isn't that amazing that this small little house church, God is using what we're doing here somewhere else. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, like. And it's beautiful that we get to talk about those fruits, and you know we're just we're just being used by God in that way, and how everything is helping. Um, so n another big thing is we got to see the the water well that was built. Yeah. Got to see where our is even more of just and see the orphans that they're being fed and taught, mm -hmm. but with the water well, yeah. I'd, it was really cool to see that and the kids using that and the school using that. I thought that was amazing. Um, Jonathan has an, a picture to show us of that. Hold on a second. It'll come up. I have some pictures under the, your other one, Sean, but not under the combined with Allie and me. It's um, the one that just says your name. They're all there. I can try to move them over. Oh, no, it's okay. I can, I can move to get that. Uh, There's a couple of video clips there, too. Like, where Frederick talked about revival. Yeah, you want that. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a picture of, if I can get it out. Uh, hey, John, is there a way maybe you could share it on your screen? Oh, there you go. All right, let me, let, me, let me do that. Let me open up my email that I sent. I got, and... I got one up right here, that, uh, but yeah, there's all of us at the water. Well, like you can't see it because all the kids are surrounding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get back to. Uh, is this the one that we paid for, where it's like a big tank and the water comes from the roof and goes into the tank, or is this? No, it's like. like uh, no, that, was that was in Uganda. That was in Uganda. That was in Uganda. Yeah. yeah so. Um, I'm going to pull up another one. Yeah. I'll just get back to the thing. So Jonathan can... Can you, can you see the pictures? Yeah. Yeah, now we can. All right, I'll, I'll flip it as you're talking. But yeah, what was cool is the giving at our church is, makes an impact over there. So that when we went over there, we Jonathan and I got to speak in front of the school... And we had a real life example. I got to teach, I took John chapter four about the Samaritan woman at the well, and used it to spring into the gospel. But then also brought in my own testimony into it as well as uh, an atheist who went to becoming a uh, a pastor, and talked about how I went through suicide and a desire a desire for suicide, and I was hungering after. Something and, and Christ relieved my thirst for for joy and and uh, and it just kind of resonated with the group really well and the the director uh, his wife right there um, she walked up to me afterwards and said what you said was really important because many young men uh, deal with suicide. And they don't express their their opinions on that. They don't express themselves about it, and you know they're they're told to push down their emotions and not talk about things like suicide or anything like that. And they she told me about three boys who tried to kill themselves selves, and she said that um, hopefully the young young boys in this group will will um, uh, hear hear you, hear what you have to say, and hear the gospel being presented through you, and then Jonathan went into a full-on uh, gospel presentation, and I tell you what, uh, this man, he is, he's the director of the school, and this man right here, he is, uh, like the pastor of the school, uh, the guy in the blue, uh, behind the kid right there, um, you know, he was hanging on every word that Jonathan and I were talking about, but I got to sit and just watch everybody's reactions. And I'm not very good at reading people, but I was able to read them. <laughs> I'll just say that. And they were, them. yeah, it really caused them to think they were just like, they didn't look like they were disagreeing at all. They were just glad. <laughs> and, uh, about things and and uh, five of the orphans go to this school um, as well. And uh, Jonathan, you you want to interject something? Um, well, I'm about to pull up the pictures, but it's being you know, real slow to pull it up. Let me see if I can get it. Hang on a sec. Um, I gotta get the zoom fixed. Sorry. Good old technology. Sometimes it works. Yeah. Yeah, but well, yeah, I mean, this this is also um, some of the parents that, that when the, the school was actually closed because they uh, they're on vacation uh, right now, but they all came. There's about 400 over 400 kids that go to that school. We had a, a, several hundred that came uh, just to listen to us, and it was like school was out. Um, and uh, the parents came as well, so it was really a uh, unique opportunity to be able to present the gospel. Um, this is actually the well here. Hopefully, you can. can you see that picture of the well? Mm -mm. No. 
see the one like us standing in front of it, but I don't think. Oh, uh, hang, hang on a second. Let me try that. It maybe takes a second to get off. Alright. Yeah, so that, that's the um uh, so this kind of like by water for all the students and then um also for the community as well. Um but yeah it was, it was um it was, a, it was a neat experience to be able to to be there where the well was and then also um be able to present the gospel and to uh students. Uh, that was our our first, our first day, we got off the plane, we, we went to the house and had a little something to eat and then went to Frederick's and, and preached. Uh, and the second day, we were at the school and then later on at a, at a church. So it, it was constantly moving. It was kind of like what you would think about how Paul and the disciples would be going place to place uh, just preaching. So it was a very unique opportunity. Yeah, it was... Uh... It, it was interesting because as soon as we got off the plane, you know, we were we were going to a church <laughs> to go preach. Come home that night. The next day, we preached at a couple places and talking. Um, so it was it was like bam, 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 bam. And then at the the last day, we were preaching, and then we went to the plane <laughs> to get get back. So it was uh, they they it, they had us and they used us. <laughs> The, the picture that's up right now is the first day. Um, this is at Pastor Frederick's church. These are some of the orphans as well. Um, well, there's another place. So, so that that's Frederick's church um, right here. Ah, uh, it's loading. Just there, I think. Or, okay. Or it's not showing up on the screen. It, it might just take a minute, but. Mm. Mm. Still not showing. Nope, still not. Let me just make sure it's still sharing. Yeah, it's still sharing. Okay. Maybe unshare and then share it again. Maybe it'll pop load it up. Okay. Let's try it now, maybe. All right, now it's coming up. Should be. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, All right. So yeah, so this this building is Pastor Frederick's church. Um, and then right here is where another well is being. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to dig deeper to get to the, the water, but this is actually part of the land we plan on trying to purchase. This part like right here on the left hand side and the right hand side, um, and that way the we could eventually build. Um, for willing that a primary school that will have also boarding for all the orphans. Um, so that would be the land right there. Perfect locations right off the main road and uh, easy to get to. Yeah, we, we talked about building this school over there, which that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but something cool about that church is meeting some of the orphans. Like, after we were done preaching and stuff, uh, they brought up some of the kids and the orphans, and they were all doing Bible verse memorization. And the kids were, weren't remembering, like, normal, like, you know, typical scriptures, like, John 3.16, you know, things like that. Like, they are remembering, like, really solid verses. <laughs> and this one girl, this one orphan... She was just quoting scripture after scripture after scripture. I, I forget how many scriptures she was quoting, Jonathan. And then she sang a song, too. Yeah. She, yeah she, she's the one, if you recall, a few, uh, when, I, when, I, when I talked about Africa, uh, when I was there in Newcastle, the, she was the one that sang a song that was by his grace. And uh, as she was singing, we started crying. And um, and. So she she's the one that she looked obviously that's two years older and um, still doing wonderful and yeah she she did at least I, I mean probably at least eight verses and that's all it was, it was yeah it was and there were verses dealing with like the depravity of man there were verses dealing with like the sovereignty of God there were verses dealing with with the, with gospel issues there and there were there are verses that. 
had a like she was memorizing because they had like a a, a right theology of, of dealing with suffering and pain. It wasn't like you know I'm gonna make you prosper and all yeah. this stuff. It was you know just having the Lord as as a refuge and that's that's pretty amazing. And I got but from all of the orphans I got to talk to individually that can talk with me and stuff. I can see like Pastor Frederick and these guys are doing well with these kids. I mean, you know, desiring for them to to know the word and to teach to, uh, to be able to understand the gospel and just yeah. I I, I don't know if is that is that your impression, Jonathan, as well. Oh yeah, and I mean we didn't get to do it this time, but in the, my previous time being there. I, I also had the opportunity to go to the schools and uh, talk with the directors um, by myself and be able to kind of, you know, gauge like, you know, Frederick and, and you know, the kids and how they're doing and what their opinion was and how their grades were. And, um, and it was all positive. Um, and it, so it, 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 it definitely has proven itself. Um, to be someone that's authentic, mm -hmm. and um, and you're you're seeing good things happening with the with the kids. Um, yeah, I mean they they have a very high view of education. These the young kids, the the one kid, Jarrell, he he said he wants to be a doctor. <laughs> he, I think what Jarrell was, um, thirteen, fourteen. -ish? Yeah, that's, that's probably right. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen years old. Like it's hard to tell because he, um, he's very mature, but also, yeah, he, he doesn't have like I'm used to teenagers having a teenage attitude, <laughs> except for Cameron, <laughs> unless Molly can tell you otherwise. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, um, yeah, it is, but just. Cool to see them. The kids have great aspirations, great dreams, great hopes, but they also put Christ in His word. They seem to be like from what the kids that I talk to, they seem to want to put Christ first in their lives. You know, and, and I, I tell you what, like the way they they love these kids is is pretty amazing. Like you know, here in the United States, there's such a hardened attitude towards towards helping the least of these mm -hmm. and and these guys you know um the the director he was like why wouldn't i help these kids you know mm -hmm. why wouldn't i take in orphans or, or things like that and then he was like we have so much here why not get out and, and we're like uh <laughs> <laughs> what <don't> anything. <laughs> yeah but prepared them but yeah, it, it, it's cool to see their hearts behind things. Like, you know, myself, I it was part of the coolest part for me was standing next to orphans with a, my pro-life shirt on, but also seeing these kids and going, man, each each and every one of these kids are, are souls and they need to take care of, but they have loving people who make sacrifices to take care of these kids. That's, that's the beautiful thing about it. Like, I was just totally blown away by it. And, when, wow, praise God that, that these guys make these kind of sacrifices. Um, Pat, uh, uh, Pastor Frederick told us a story about how he saved one of the orphans, you know, that parents died of AIDS and they were, what, quarantining her in, you know, because it's like they, they were basically like, oh, she has this disease and they left her with, with her parents' dead body. And stuff. What and uh, four past, years, four, what was that? Four years old. Four wow. years old, and leaving her to die. So Pastor Frederick snuck in, grabbed her, took her to the hospital, <laughs> and got her tested for H for HIV, and then took her in as took her in. Do they like live in villages, and then their village has like weird beliefs about? illness and like, they, like yeah. I've read about stuff like that before like 
they think they're cursed or something, so they just abandon them if they have. Yes, uh, I, I, Dr. Uh, Pastor Frederick did mention things about that, and so they also do things with like educate uh, education on AIDS and AIDS prevention and stuff like that there mm -hmm. to further so they'll help understand the community, what uh, communities, which like I never like. The things that they, they think of are, are quite amazing, like, with, with how to help children. Um, it's it's mind-blowing. Like, uh, at the school, when they were talking about getting shoes and, and the floor, asking me to help with the floors and stuff there because they get uh, chicas. Um, John, do you want to explain that? Well, yeah, I, I don't know if you see the picture that's up there. That's the one that, one of them with uh, Sean's pro life shirt that he's talking about. Um, That's an but out there. Um, the, the, it's not up on the screen. Oh, it's not. Uh, well, while I'm talking, I'll I'll read it again. Uh, I guess sometimes it does that. So anyway, so chicas are there's different names for them, but they're um, little insects. They they look like um, kind of like little roaches almost. But when you um, when kids that don't have shoes on, um, they these, these animals, these little insects, when they they actually drill into your foot, and so they'll they'll they're actually they'll do like a drill and they'll go into your foot and they will stay there um, until they're treated and they actually feed off of your flesh. So you're in constant pain and and if it's not if it's not treated, it would actually causes people to become delirious because of the pain, um, where they become like crazy almost. Um, because it's so unbearable. Um, and so 40 children at the school got it because the, the floor was um, broken up like the, 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 the rocks, like they didn't have like a, a cemented floor. And so these bugs um, were got in and they were within the rocks and the kids um, didn't have shoes and they, they got, they got um, into their foot. So we're sending Medicaid uh, medicine um, that actually um, this week we're going to be sending the funds for them to be treated uh, to get get rid of these um, these animals from this because they're they're actually inside of their feet right now. So what do they treat it with? It, it's a special medicine that's specifically for that, um, but it, it takes several weeks to be able to treatment and to to get rid of it. Um, I don't know all the details of it, um, but yeah, it's kind of kind of like an alien being inside of you. You can imagine that. Yeah, yeah they're um, Yeah, it was interesting when you look look it up. If you do these chicas, they they don't like. I was thinking like you know, worm type thing or like big teeth or whatever. No, it looks like a normal bug. Was they kind of like a ladybug to me? <laughs> it's, it's you know, I'm sure if you got an up close look of its face, it would probably be a little bit more scary. But you know, looking at it, it, it doesn't look like anything. And, um, yeah, so they don't have shoes on, all of them in that picture. Yeah, they don't have shoes. No, I don't think so. But um, probably working on getting them shoes. Well, and stuff. I don't know. Wait, wait. If you see the picture that I just switched over to where Sean's over the top of the bags, with the bags, um, we took um, 250 pounds of uh, clothing and shoes. Didn't show up. Is that showing up yet? Yeah. Did it show up? No. no sure. Okay. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll just keep stopping. I guess every time I switch pictures, I have to stop and share it again. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, we fortunately um, we were able to. I had all these clothes and shoes that had been donated, and I had them um, stored away in our and um, organized. And so I had I pa had these all packed up. Um, and so each bag is about fifty pounds, and uh, so they're still distributing those items. And then also with our the money, we're going to be helping with um, getting shoes as well. Uh, we, had, we had fun carrying those bags. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we uh, yeah we, we had an adventure carrying those bags around. <laughs> um, but yeah, especially at uh, at the Kenyan airport. 
but yeah, three three security gates in order to <laughs> you have to unload it three times just to get into the airport. Right. Um, well, another story was that uh, at, um, I forget which, which pastor's church it was, not Pastor Winslow, but um, one of the other, other pastors. Um, we, it was a, it was a smaller church um, where the lady came in and and you know repent. And she seemed to be mourning her sin and wanted to repent and believe. That yeah. Was... Yeah. After um, I think I think Sean, you you had did the yeah you did the attributes of God and then I followed up with. I think at that one, I think I talked about Christ in all the scriptures, and I, I kind of, like, yeah. it was like, a, as I was sitting there listening to Sean, I kind of, like, flipped through and gathered all my verses, and then I made it into a message, and um, and then kind of did a gospel presentation throughout that, and um, she had, this this elderly woman, she kind of, she, she kept, she came up to the front, she put down a little kind of scarf type thing on um just you know to kneel down that's a common thing in Kenya um and uh and you know she had like kind of tears in her eyes and um Frederick had said that she desires to repent of her sins and and um so I I kind of talked to her about what repentance was and there's not a magic prayer I can tell you to do and I kind of went through the whole thing and then um we all prayed and as as we were praying she was saying uttering words, I, I, we didn't ask her to say anything, and Frederick whispered over to me and translated that, and she was, um, she was crying out to God for repentance for her sins, so we prayed that it was authentic, and that God did a great, a miracle that day, so. You know, and, and what I'll say to that is, you know, when people go on these trips, like, you were like, oh, we've got a million people saved, and we got... That that wasn't, yeah. We can't claim that, but what we can say is we preach the gospel faithfully, and and Lord willing, maybe one person came to repentance and to a belief in Christ, which is amazing, mm -hmm. in on itself. Hopefully, she she stays with it. Hopefully, the Lord has truly done a work in their heart. But yeah, it's 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 just a beautiful thing, and to because. You know what our church is. What's beautiful? What our church is doing with our giving and our helping and our teaching and stuff is like we we really have a good balance. Is not only are we helping supply needs, but we're also giving the word, giving the gospel, hand in hand. So like our giving, like with the well, with things like this, gives us an opportunity to preach the gospel. Gives Frederick an opportunity to. Yeah, it's just it it can it one aids the other, and it's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing, and I I just I I adore it because <laughs> um you know so many people go one way or the other with it, but it's just beautiful to see that balance and to know that our giving and our going out through the word of God week in and week out just makes an impact worldwide and and Craig I said you would be the most encouraged hopefully Lord willing <laughs> because when you're preaching here on Wednesday nights <laughs> I can tell it's being and it's being used <laughs> in other places <laughs> you know and you never know how we just scatter seed, and God's the one who makes it grow. <laughs> and I think a big thing that this trip and any any trip that we we do, the goal is um, ultimately is to spread sound teaching because in Kenya it's not it, it, there's so much um, you have you have you have a mix of people that think they're believers just like you have in the United States and they're not. And you have uh, you have people that are just um, ignorant to, to the biblical truth. They don't have Bibles. Um, and and Bagumba, um, a small percentage, maybe 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 two percent, 
have uh, Bibles in Swahili. And so, you know, the whole movement, we're, at, we're, we're providing Bibles in Swahili now. And, and it was kind of neat how, uh, as soon as we got back from Kenya, I connected with, um, it was just by God's sovereignty because it was a, a mutual pastor who's Kenyan who, um, who organized the conference that Frederick and the guys went to previously that we, we kind of sent them to. And um, he was with this American missionary, just moved a few years ago to Bagumba with his family. He has uh, 10 kids, seven of them moved with them. The other ones are uh, older kids. And, um, and so they're caring for orphans as well. I connected with him. So the next time we're gonna be meet, meeting up and, um, and then through them, they're also connected with this other organization that raises funds to distribute uh, Bibles in different languages. And so then he connected with me. So God's really doing the work and connecting, making connections right there in Bagumba. And, um, but there's just a lot of ignorance to, you know, just basic things, like you don't know how to use the word prophet or prophecy or, um, you know, just, you know, just minor things where you use things, terminology out of context or wrong. Uh, and it's not that they're trying to twist things, but it's just that they just aren't, they're not aware of how to use it properly. Um, when you don't have a Bible, it's kind of hard to follow it. And so um, what, what we did this week is something that you give them solid teaching and then they teach it and it just, it would just, it just like a wildfire just goes goes out and then along with that giving them bibles and swahili and we did a distribution of bibles while we were there um as well so it's um that that's you know yeah we go to evaluate make sure that our, the funds are being used properly but the biggest thing is that the, the gospel is being proclaimed and truths are being heard and then they take it and they they start teaching it and um that's when you see true transformation. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I think also that the trip is, I think, made me a little bit better as a pastor and preacher. Because during that week, we, Jonathan and I both had to go with the flow <laughs> of what we were teaching and had to, like, one night we were, we were thinking about what to teach now and, like, thinking through things. We were brainstorming and you know, different ideas and going back and forth and, uh, you know, coming up with teaching specifically for the church based on what Pastor Winslow would tell us or things like that. So it, it helped make me, it make me a little bit better and also preaching with a bit more boldness <laughs> there was, was helpful. <laughs> But Sean got a little Pentecostal at times. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, just watch the videos. <laughs> um, yeah, we, if, if, if you go, if you do go to YouTube, um, Esperanza Movement, um, I have a playlist that says Swahili, and on there you'll see uh, all the sermons. I have them all edited, um, and. Uh, it, it each one ends with like what day it was so it starts off like day one day two that kind of thing so you'll be able to see the sermons there it's, as well it stinks that we couldn't get all of like the doctrines of grace mm -hmm. yeah the came, battery died <laughs> yeah the battery died but got total depravity <laughs> yeah <laughs> so were you preaching then they would just translate it well pastor winslow was our translator the whole time and thank god for him because he like so Jonathan and I would go back and forth as as if we were teaching like maybe you know four sermons a day. You know, I would teach two, he would teach two, going to two different places or three a day. But Pastor Winslow was translating for us. So as if he was preaching six sermons a day, because he was our translator. Oh, oh, my. So he was going twice as much as we were. And then not only that, if there's like a change in maybe something I would say. He had, he was thinking on the fly of how to train for it. So his brain is that's hard, that's hard man. Yeah, he, he, like Pastor Winslow is very, and it's very like it's kind of hard with Pastor Winslow not to be excited to preach because you know we like I know I was feeding off of Pastor Winslow going back and forth. It was cool with him because he, whenever you're preaching, he would say something and you would say it, but he would like go you know, like, "Whoa, that was amazing." 
hold on a second. <laughs> he would go. <laughs> like, that's, I love that when, when Pastor Winslow, that's Pastor Winslow right oh. there next to Jonathan. He, uh, um, yeah, uh, that's Pastor Frederick. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, um, so, sorry. So, yeah, Pastor uh, Winslow is uh, um, an awesome guy. And he, if it wasn't for him translating and translating well, message wouldn't have been across. And he wanted, I could tell he was doing it accurately and was portraying what we wanted to portray. And he uh, um, just, but not only that, he knew the needs of the people too. Yeah. So then, you know, he could take what we were talking about and just like apply it to what, what was said to their context a little bit be- better. Or if there was an analogy that I used that hit him, he could then like change it up a little bit to fit them. Yeah. Which he's um, he, he's a very uh, a brilliant man. And, and he and Jonathan together was like watching art. <laughs> like, they would pump each other up and like go back and forth, match intensity. It was it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's well, it's almost. Uh, I know I could talk about this all night, but um, it's probably about time we we pray though too. And, and but, John, is there anything? One last thing you want to say or? Well, I mean, I, are, are you using your um, your laptop or mic? My laptop. Okay. Well, I, what I'll do is I'll send you guys the link to um, an intro <coughs> before we, we started preaching one day, yeah. and Frederick was talking, um, and he, he was sharing some things like how he came to my house and things like that, and then he, um, he also talked about what revival was, um, I, and that, that was a cool moment too, so... Um, I'll send that guy. I'll send a link to you um, with the, uh, the to the photo gallery because I have about 600 pictures, and then um, <laughs> the links to the videos as well, so you guys will be able to check it out on your own time as well. So yeah, there's some cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, you can you can talk all night about this. There's so many stories and you know things that we could share. Yeah, funny stories and uh, yeah. Yeah. but obviously yeah. We, I wanted to hit the big things, and you know, I hope you guys are excited and moved that your prayers are worth it, you know, to, are working in Kenya for revival because they're taking revival seriously. And that you know what you give is is immensely important and is being used and should just give you a, a joy in giving. And they even push you to give more if you see all the photos and, and see all the preaching to see that these guys are great. <laughs> but also just you know, just resting in the fact that man, you're part of we're we're just a part of God's working in people's lives. That's the beautiful thing. <laughs> so you know, let us let us pray together. Uh, there's one, two, three.